This video is brought to you by you. Stick around after the end to find out how you can help determine the future of this channel. In 2021, Microsoft made waves in the tech world by announcing that Windows 11 would require a Microsoft account in order to work properly. Sentiment around this was mostly negative, although recently my producer asked me a surprising question regarding policies like this. Well, you are a intelligent, you are a with able to use that Steam Deck without that Steam account? What the fuck? And I think it's worth looking into. So, I've taken it upon myself to recreate the unboxing experience as best I can for you guys. Get whatever this is, and a paper. There it is. Look at that. Ignore that there's already cat hair on it. I haven't had this open before. We're just gonna turn it on. And you see it has this, uh, you know, choose a language option. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well on camera, but when you click into the Steam menu, normally in these power settings, there's a switch, switch to desktop mode, but uh, it's not there. So we're just gonna connect to Wi-Fi. See, now it brings us to a sign-in screen. So obviously we need a Steam account. I mean, there's, there's no way that going to the power settings is gonna bring us any different menu than we had before we connected to Wi-Fi. I mean, the script here just says, X-Files music plays? What is that? HOLY SHIT! So as it turns out, yes, you can absolutely use the Steam Deck without a Steam account. And before we get into the how, I think it's important to take a look at why someone might want to do this. Maybe you're an Xbox gamer who's interested in buying a new console, but your whole library of games is purchased through Microsoft. Maybe you have a large collection of games on discs and you just want a more convenient option to play them. Or maybe you're just a particularly data conscious individual who doesn't want to create another account for a gaming service you might not use. As ridiculous as it may sound to some, half of the top 10 games streamed on Twitch aren't even available on Steam. And if you look even farther down, it's actually 12 games out of the top 20. Some gamers buying Steam Decks might have never had a reason to make a Steam account, and it's good to know that Valve hasn't placed any restrictions on what games and launchers you can or cannot download. Well, at least they haven't put any more restrictions on it. This is still a Linux machine after all, but even inside of those confines, Valve's emphasis on flat packs means that while there are fewer easy to access options, the ones that you do have are much more polished than your typical hackarounds. The first thing you'll need to come to grips with is that game mode will be off limits to you. We'll be operating exclusively in desktop mode for the foreseeable future, which means you're gonna need to get familiar with the Flatpak repository. The first thing you should do is navigate over to Accessories and install Core Keyboard, an on-screen keyboard which will come in very handy if you don't plan on using a physical keyboard with your deck. But Morgan! I hear you scream. You can just press Steam plus the X button to pull up the on-screen keyboard! And yes, you'd be right if we were logged in. There are a lot of creature comforts that we, in our monk-like detachment from the steamy, must live without. I was actually very motivated to find a way to get my good old games account working on the deck, because when I pre-ordered Cyberpunk, <laughs> I didn't realize it would be through GOG. Yeah. Right off the bat, you have two choices either Heroic Games Launcher or Lutris. Okay, when I said you had options, I meant bow and genuflect in the presence of Lutris, our mighty savior. Seriously, this flat pack only gained support a few days before I began researching this video, and thank Gabe for that. Lutris is basically a launcher for launchers. It's made up of the collective work of dozens of people figuring out how to run Origin, Ubisoft, Epic, and GOG on Linux and it's what made this entire project possible. It's still in beta, however, so I regret to inform you that we will have to use the command line one single time. I promise. If I can do it, you can do it. Install Lutris from your repository, and then open console from the start menu. Copy and paste this command, which I will leave down in the description of this video, and press enter. Then you'll see a few lists of ordered numbers of items. Just Type the largest number, so if it's a list of six items, type the number six and press enter. Do that as many times as you must before you receive a notification that the task is complete. 
Now, Lutris is properly installed. Immediately, I logged into my GOG account and slammed that install button. Installing games is simple enough. Just click OK and Next and wait until it's over. Unfortunately, when I went to launch Cyberpunk after it was installed, yeah, I've seen crippled tortoises run better than this. Like I said, there are some quality of life improvements that we're gonna have to do for ourselves. Chief among them is finding a new runner for our games. A runner is simply a program that can provide the correct environment to run a game when it might not natively be supported. One runner you might be familiar with is the Dolphin emulator, which can run Nintendo games. We need one that can run Windows games on our Steam Deck, and for that, we'll need to Proton Up. No, seriously, download Proton Up from the Flatpak Manager. This is a fairly simple tool that allows you to install a compatible runner with a compatible launcher. Once Proton Up is installed, it should automatically find Lutris installed in our system. Click the drop down arrow on the top of the window and select Lutris instead of Steam. This is the location we're going to install our runner to, so Lutris can find it. Next, click Add Version and select GE Proton. This is one of the more experimental Proton channels, and honestly, you'll have to do some trial and error to see which runner works best for each of your games. Select the most recent version, and then click Install. Now you can go back to Lutris, right-click on a game, and select Configure, then Runner Options, and change the runner to the one you just installed. Not all of them will work, and like I said, you'll need to do some trial and error, but you can't argue with results like this. 45 frames per second in Cyberpunk at 2560 by 1080 on low details. It doesn't look incredible or anything, but the fact that it's possible is still mind-blowing to me. So that's how you get your non-Steam library of Windows titles working on the deck, but something you might not know is that you may have a whole library of Linux-compatible games right under your nose. Indie games on Itch.io tend to support multiple platforms, for example. The Ukrainian Support Bundle contained lots of games with native Linux binaries, including Skatebird and Towerfall. The best part is that those games can just be downloaded like any other game, no tinkering required, and they will just work. Something else that just works is Dolphin. The emulator, not the file explorer, sorry. Like I mentioned earlier, Dolphin can run Nintendo games, specifically GameCube and Wii games. And since this version was built for Linux, it doesn't require any tinkering to get working. Simply install it from the Flatpak repository and load it up with your favorite legal copies of your own personal GameCube games. PlayStation 2 and 3 emulators work too, though they aren't quite as reliable. However, there is a serious issue here. All of the gaming that I did in this video was on either a mouse and keyboard or with an external gamepad. That's because Valve, in their infinite wisdom, has not released drivers for the Neptune controller. That's all the control surfaces you see on the deck. I tried everything I could think of, from Joy2Key to random GitHub projects. No matter what I do, it seems there is no way to map the control surface to any usable inputs outside of the Steam overlay or game mode. Valve, this is a huge problem, and it affects Windows users too. If Aya and GPD could figure this out, then you need to as well. As a gaming device, the Steam Deck is unrivaled in almost every way. It's a better value than most other handhelds, it's more portable than most laptops, and since it's mostly just a normal Linux device, the gaming experience with it is about as good as you can expect. All Valve needs to do is release full-fledged Linux and Windows drivers for it, and this will be the perfect handheld device. And you don't even need a Steam account to use it. I have a lot more content planned for the deck. But so wait! How are you supposed to buy a Steam Deck? if you don't have a Steam account. Shut up. I have a lot more content planned for the deck, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell, and thanks for watching. First and foremost, let me say thank you. Over the last few weeks, my subscriber count has basically doubled, and because of that, this channel is currently under review to be monetized. I couldn't have done it without you guys, so I want to know, where do you want to see this channel headed? I posted this question on my community tab last week, but I want to make sure as many viewers see it as possible. In the past, I've made a pretty wide range of content, from video essays to headphone reviews to unboxings, 
My best performing video is still my CRT gaming monitor one, but the content that's seen the most growth is definitely everything involving the Steam Deck. So what do you guys want to see next? I've even considered live streaming, but that's a pretty big time investment. I'd be very happy to become a Steam Deck focused channel, but the likes of Fan the Deck and Deck Ready have a pretty big head start on that. I ask you guys because the faster I grow, the better videos I can produce for all of you. Let me know what content you're most excited about, and I'll see you guys next week.